Welcome to Dread Vault. In this video, we have two different mini head amplifiers from Soldano and Bognar. In this video, we have two different guests. The first one is Soldano SLO100 mini head, and the other one is Bognar Ecstasy mini head. You know, those are solid state 30 watt amplifiers. And a few weeks ago, I reviewed the Diesel VH mini head from the same company. You know, they are collaborating with different brands and they are trying to imitate their legendary amplifiers as small mini solid state amplifiers you know it's debatable when it's time to imitate in the sound of all tube amplifiers especially as a solid state amplifier and i can easily say from my previous experience these stuff are really good and on my previous video i connected the diesel vh mini to a engl pro xxl 4x12 cabinet and i played the amplifier just as it is and then i connect a booster which is a Maxon OD808 and today we have a Maxon OD808 again and then I played the VH mini head with the power section of the ENGL Fireball 100 and you know with the characteristics and the dynamics of a real all tube power section everything really changed but no matter what even the out of box experience is really good I can easily say that and this time we will check the Soldano SL100 mini head and Bognar Ecstasy just as I mentioned now let's talk about our signal chain but this video is really special because today I will make a debut of a really special guitar of mine which is my new custom made V it's it's kind of bigger because it's a double roads it has the size of it and the specifications of a double roads you know the early time King V's and this thing is created by Ave Guitars which is a brand that makes custom built guitars in Turkey and also the paint job is from Turkish custom paints and both of them make exquisite job if you are interested in this guitar you can watch its own review video you can find the link on some corner this guitar has a corina body and it's a huge corina body also we have 25.5 inch scale with steel frets and the fret work is magnificent by the way obviously i use the samer duncan jb as a pickup and everybody knows if you are metal enough you don't need a neck pickup I know it's, it creates lots of controversy, but it's it's what it is, man. As a bridge, I preferred Kehler 7330 as a fixed bridge. And as tuners, we have Goto Lock tuners. And this thing is roaring. And today I will play these amplifiers with this guitar. Obviously, we have a Maxon OD808 and a Boss Chromatic tuner, which is TU3. Also, this amplifier goes to the Mesa Rectifier 4x12 cabinet of mine, which is loaded with UK Celestion V30s on the other room. And there's a Shure SM57, which is placed as half cap and half cone. And the signal of this microphone comes to my Tescam M2600. And I'm using a Focusrite 18 i 20 as an AD converter and you know you will hear the audio without any post process and now let's connect our guitar and then let's hear the soul down of first and then we will check Bognar. Also the tuning of the guitar is C standard and we will start without the Maxon OD808 and everything is at noon. We have master, presence, treble, middle, bass and gain and we have a crunch and overdrive switch and it's on the crunch right now and we are on the normal mode instead of deep. Let's hear it. Let's tweak it a little bit.
it's roaring but i know we can get a more dynamic yet chugging metal tone from this thing let's check the deep mode first You know, it adds a little bit of low end actually, it has lots of low end, but as a starter I will keep it on the normal mode and then if we need it I will open this thing up. Let's check the overdrive mode. Now let's return to the noon again and let's switch back to the crunch mode and then let's open up the Maxon or the A2A. And obviously we have the traditional settings, you know, no drive, all the way, volume and half tone. <laughs> I hope you can hear it too, but with Maxon OD808, the top end is kind of glued together instead of barking or sizzling without any control. Let me show it again. <laughs> Because of it, most of the time, instead of pushing the amplifier to its limits, I prefer to boost it with an Maxon OD808, no matter what. For me, it kind of controls the low end and it adds a little bit of saturation to the top end. You know, it's nothing new, people are using this for this purpose for the 40 years, but it's why I use it also. I just want to mention it. <laughs> Just like the diesel VH Mini, the middle knob has a boxy type of characteristics. As far as I remember, on the diesel VH Mini, I could get a one proper sound instead of some diverse characteristics. The spectrum of that amplifier was really narrow and unlike that amplifier, the SLO100 spectrum is really wide, but still it has the same problematic middle knob. Because of it, I want to lower it as much. <laughs> You know, I'm not scooping the mids just like Dimebag Daryl, but you know, it adds a disturbing sizzle, at least it's disturbing to my ears.
I like this one more than diesel VH mini. I can easily say it. You know, just like an old tube amplifier, I can hear every detail of my hands, both good and bad, instead of some mixed ready sterile amplifier. And I really liked it. And now let's put this amplifier beside and then let's check Bogner Ecstasy. And now we are on the Bogner Ecstasy. You know the drill. We will start with the noon. And on this amplifier, we have a few additional switches, which are the Variac? Vera? I'm not sure what it is. I never played a Bogner before, also, I have to mention it. And we have a gain minus and plus. We will check it, obviously. We have some mid cut, probably, and pre EQ. And let's start. Let's make it everything noon. It's fat, it's really fat, and I just figured out there was a Maxon or the 808, so let's hear it. <laughs> Liked it, and now let's tweak it. <laughs> I'm not sure what it is, but probably I won't use it again. <laughs> change the characteristics of the mid frequencies but it's not huge it's not it's not big <laughs> You know, on the both sides of the pre-EQ switch, as far as I understand, we have two different pre-EQ adjustments, but I will go with the noon position without any pre-EQ because I know I can get something better than some other people's adjustments. <laughs> again but at least this time the middle knobs is getting acceptable just below the noon position but I don't like this box in it
And now let's open up Maxon OD-808. Now let's check the pre-EQ adjustments again. It's too harsh. It's definitely too harsh. The 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 left side. It's noon again. You know the effect of the right side is way lower than the effect of the left side but still there's a sizzle on the top end on the pre-eq i definitely would go without any pre-eq adjustment Let's talk about these amplifiers again just a little bit and then let's close the video. So just like most of my other videos, you watched my first impression moments and I really like them. You know, dialing up this stuff is really easy and you don't need to tweak lots of different options. I'm not sure they are really sounding like the real deal because I never played an SL100 but I played some Hot Rod 50 and I never touched a Bogner, especially the Ecstasy model. So I have no idea about how a Bogner sounds like but I really like their sound. They are really dynamic. You know, there's a solid state taste no matter what but you can easily ignore it with the power of a power tube amplifier you know you can use these amplifiers just like a overdrive or a distortion pedal you know their preamps are working like a distortion pedal and as far as i remember the vh mini was an exact copy of the diesel overdrive vh overdrive i'm not sure the exact model and actually it was cheaper than the real pedal <laughs> so it can be a nice alternative if you don't have enough budget also if you don't have enough space or budget to purchase the real alternatives of these amplifiers purchasing a few of them and using it using them with a real old tube amplifier just one old tube amplifier can unlock lots of different sounds at your home and as my final thoughts i really liked it it's really worth the price i'm not sure about the recording performance I wouldn't use this for a real album recording but it can be a good companion on the road too. Besides that there's nothing else to say. They are solid, they are nice and they are budget friendly and they are really small. I really liked it and I hope you enjoyed the content and if you enjoyed please don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel and please don't forget to leave your opinions in the comment section. Till the next video, see ya.